live sports. On base percentage of 666. Galza. Three balls and a strike. I think Lorenz the advantage here. Q shot. Going to be a tough chance. Jesse Warren. Not in time. Infield single for Lorenz. Back to back off speed curveballs from Peyton St. George. You saw the end of the bat from Amanda Lorenz. It's something that she throws consistently. And you look at the pitch ar arsenal here, see the change up 53 miles an hour and sprays the ball around. Has a good rise ball, should utilize a lot. It's always tough to hit off of pitchers when you're bringing the velocity high and high and tight, and then you have the low and slow, whether that's a change up or an off speed curve. Just really nice separation. Danielle Gibson moves up in the box. It takes called strike one. Gibson yesterday 0 for 2 with the walk. Before we had our game earlier today, Gibson was 24th on the leaderboard. But with one game underway, a lot of the players from Team Fer Ferremo and Romero able to move up. Into center field, Victoria Hayward. That ball had a lot of curve on it. Played beautifully by Hayward, two down. Well, we played one game here in this field, and probably six of the seven innings were played in drizzle. It rained throughout the course of the morning and early afternoon, but it seems to have cleared. Here's Delaney Wiz, way out in front. It's turned into a beautiful day here. I'm sure all the athletes in game one are you know, given some hard time to the athletes in game two. Like, really? You have perfect weather for your game? Watching Alicia, Alicia Ocasio and Kat Sandercock having to get through the rain, and it's never fun to pitch in when it's just constantly coming down like it was, but they did a really good job. and. Unfortunately, it, we talked about it. It did affect the first couple of innings. We saw some errant throws because of the rain, but no rain now. Ball and two strikes to Wiz. And yeah, the final score in our first game, Team Romero won 10 to three. Uh, the errors for Team Faremo, huge. They made four of them, leading to four unearned runs. Team Romero airtight, didn't make any errors. And they pick up the win, and they won six of the seven innings. So a huge point total just in innings and the total win for Team Romero. Two and two to Wiz. Already seen a little bit of everything in this, just this at bat alone from Peyton St. George. Saw the rise ball there with Wiz fouling it off, but also a couple of curveballs in the outside part of the plate, a couple of off speed curveballs, which is a 10 pitch separator from that off speed curve to the hard curve, but they look so similar because of the way they spin. So the count's going to go full. Three balls and two strikes with two outs. Run on first base, Lorenz. We'll be on the move. There she goes. Routine sis Bates. Side is retired. So a walk, I'm sorry, a base hit for Lorenz, but no run scored against Peyton St. George. When we come back, Team Garcia to the bat rack. Like Mike, if I could be like Mike. You want to be like the greats? First, believe you are. Greatness requires drip, not like that, like this. The greats aren't afraid to fail. They're fueled by it. Trophies require greatness, but greatness doesn't require trophies because greatness isn't about what you've done. It's about what you do next.
Scoreless first half of the inning for Team Zirkle. That means that Team Garcia, should they score just one run, they'll have won the first inning and get a plus 10 for everyone on their side. Rachel Garcia, as the captain, fills out her lineup card with Victoria Hayward leading things off. Fellow Canadian Olympian Kelsey Harshman hits in the two hole. Deja Mulipola, there's Garcia in the cleanup spot. Taylor Edwards, Jesse Warren hits sixth for the second straight day. Jasmine Jackson, Lily Piper, and Sis Bates rounding out the nine. So those hitters will bat against former Oregon State Beaver, Mariah Massone. Second year pro, was a rookie a season ago. And throws hard. Brings the velocity, one of the harder throwers in this league. And throws a little bit of everything. We'll see her throw curve, drop, rise. And to me, she's been working on her, her off-speed. See to the change up there, 51 miles an hour. That's a pitch that's much improved for her and a pitch that I really think she needs in this league to offset the heat that she's able to bring. So the queen, Victoria Hayward, leads things off. Vic began the day 25th on the leaderboard. She was one for four yesterday in the loss against Team Romero. She's been playing high-level softball for a long time, was the youngest member of the Canadian national team when she was a teenager. She's been a big part of Team Canada for years and years and years. Recently named assistant coach at her alma mater, Washington. We just talked about how Carrie Eberle is now the pitching coach for her alma mater, or Oklahoma State, and now Another one of these AU players, there's so many of them, you just go down the roster that are currently coaching in the Division I ranks, and a lot of them are at their alma mater, so that's pretty cool. Hayward Harshman Muli Pola. Two and two to Hayward. Classic Victoria Hayward. Handles the bat with the best of them. Super hard to get anything past her. She'll be the hitting coach at Washington. That will be her responsibility. Has been at San Diego State help them get to their first ever Super Regional appearance this season. I feel like there's so many of these players in AU that are really going to carry our sport in the next 20 years, 20 to 30 years. Of course, they're still playing and we're enjoying their talents, but at some point they will kind of turn the page and continue to stay around the game and give all of their knowledge and pass it on to the next generation. And I love the fact that this league allows these players to do both. I think that's so dynamic and so good for our sport. Not only is that going to make them better players for them individually, but it's going to make them better coaches because they're around the best of the best. So they're always constantly learning and picking up drills, tips, picking the brains of the athletes that they want to emulate, want to be a little bit like Victoria Hayward. Let's get into her mind. How does she do it? What's her approach? Here's Kelsey Harshman. Harshman doubled in the game yesterday against Team Romero. Talking about coaches and still playing. Out in center field right now for Team Zirkel. Oregon Zirkel. I asked her. I said, are you still planning on playing AU? You now your head coach at Marshall. And she said, that's one of the things we talked about when I took the job, is they encouraged me to continue playing. Harshman into the gap in left center field. That's going to be a double for Harshman. Runners on at second and third with nobody out and a chance for an inning win for Team Garcia. I feel like Victoria Hayward and Kelsey Harshman have played a couple of games together. They just, I feel like it's that Canadian connection. One gets on, the other one's going to get on. It's automatic. Both left-handed hitters. Vic's got the speed for days. She's going to read this all day long. Slides into third with ease. Victoria Hayward just gave 10 points to Kelsey Harshman. 
because of the hustle and the speed of Hayward to get to third, that allowed Harshman to get into second with a double. And both Hayward and Harshman will score on a double by Muli Pola. 2-0 lead for Team Garcia. Wow. A couple of uh, lightning strikes for Team Garcia. Well, when I was looking at this matchup going into today, you think about these two teams. Both were on the raw end of the deal yesterday, lost both of their games. And so I was wondering who was going to throw the first punch because I think that's going to be the separator. Both of these teams really trying to be the one to do it. And right now, Team Garcia very, very quickly already on the board with two solid hits from Harshman, Mulipola. And of course, you have to tip your cap to the coach, Victoria Hayward at the top, setting the table with the leadoff walk. Here's Rachel Garcia. You got the runner on at second base, Muli Pola, the champion of last year's championship season. And then you got the batter in the right-handed batter's box, Rachel Garcia, the champion of the AUX season back in June. Still nobody out. Now the person making all the decisions for Team Zirkel, pitching changes, lineup changes, is the center fielder, Morgan Zirkel. She's looking in at the entire field, so she's got a bird's eye view at what Masson is doing. And Garcia strikes out. That's the first out recorded by Masson. Good circle out there in center field. I think that's an advantage for a captain because you do have to be dialed into the game, and it's very hard when you're playing maybe a corner and you're kind of focused on yourself. But when you're in center field, you have such a good view of the strike zone, so she can really see if Masson in the circles dialed in like you talked about if she's missing some spots here or there situational I just feel like the vision and as a pitcher I would always kind of have this thing where if I was frustrated a little bit I would look to my center fielder because I'm like if she's gonna validate my frustration that makes me feel a little bit better because she's staring right down the same tunnel I am watching the strike zone watching the pitches come in I just think it off the top of my head a lot of great pitchers have become Head coaches, Lonnie Alameda, Florida yeah. State. A lot of great center fielders have become head coaches in the Pac-12. You got Laura Berg, you've got Caitlin Lowe. And so you know, being able to see the field and everything develop in front of you makes a difference. And it's funny you mentioned Caitlin Lowe because when I think of Morgan Zirkle, she reminds me so much of Caitlin Lowe. And it's not just the way that she plays center field and she's incredibly fast, has the short game, but it's just kind of, oh, well, there's her view right there. That's ah. great. Asking, you shall receive. Yeah. But it's just kind of the way that she goes about her business. Morgan Zirkle's not a flashy person. She's very businesslike. When she speaks, it's going to be something that people want to listen to. And it kind of reminiscent of another center fielder, All American, and Caitlin Lowe. Very similar characteristics. Morgan Zirkle, even more than playing in all six seasons with AU softball, she's played in every game. Nice play. Sydney McKinney to her left, two down. Wooly Pola on it, third with two outs. Next batter is going to be Jesse Warren. For every run scored during this year's Athletes Unlimited softball season, Aspiration is committed to planting 10 trees. Heading into this week, 380 trees have been committed this season thanks to Aspiration's support. Well, a really goofy day offensively for Jesse Warren yesterday. She hit three cue shots, came to the plate three times. All three times just couldn't hit any softers, like she was swinging a rolled up newspaper. She got two hits out of it. Never got the ball to the outfield grass. Ball was just spinning off of her bat. But she'll take it. 30 years from now, she'll look at the box score and say, man, I had frozen ropes all evening long to get those two hits. So we're going to take a look at and these two cue shots like you were talking about. They were difference makers in the game. Got Garcia with a little bit of momentum. 
But here is the highlights that we really like to see is the defensive stuff from Jesse Warren. She'll give us more than that. She, well, you just wait. Stay around, and anytime she's on defense, you got to be locked in because she can do this at any moment. Has a cannon of an arm. Probably has the best arm here in AU, if I had to guess. Goes to her knees. Just one of the best, if not the best, glove in our sport at third base. Good play by the catcher, Svekis. Runner on at third base. Anything gets past Svekis, and it's another run scored. I find it amazing that uh, my analyst, who is from Tucson, Arizona, about five minutes ago said that uh, pretty nice day. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's still raining. I'm sorry. Is that a bad broadcaster's jinx that I just. <laughs> yeah, it rained had stopped for a moment, but now it's raining again. I like, just noticed the, uh, yeah. the umbrella's out. Like, what a nice day. <laughs> One minute later. For someone who uh, <laughs> spends their life in 115 degree desert heat. On the ground, should end the inning. Muffley. Throws out Warren, side retired. But two run score, it's an inning win for Team Garcia. Athletes Unlimited Softball on ESPN is sponsored by Tops and by Aspiration, a global leader in financing climate impact. Man, a lot of emotion so far this weekend, week two of what will be a five-week Athletes Unlimited Softball championship season. Taking a look at uh, Team Ferremo, a member of that team, Kat Sandercock, is going to join us here this half inning. It is a 2-0 lead, Team Garcia on top of Team Zirkel. Top of the second inning, expecting to see Caroline Jacobson, Sydney McKinney, and Gwen Speckis. There is Kat Sandercock. Kat, thank you for joining us. Hey, fun watching you play in the first game. Obviously, you didn't get the win, but you pitched pretty well. You gave up some runs, but they weren't earned. How well do you know the scoring system? Did you know that those runs that scored weren't going to be a negative to you? Yeah, um, I think coming in, learning the scoring system, I think it's really cool. So I think in the moment I wasn't really thinking about earned or unearned. And then after words on the game, I looked at the score sheet and I saw that they were unearned. So all good for me. But Kat, uh, introduce us to who you have around you. Yeah, I've just made some new friends. You right. guys want to wave to the camera. This is Peyton, McKenna. This is Ella, Michaela, and Addie. Wow. And just sat down with these guys and talking through some some of the game so it's fun i'm so impressed that you know all of their names like that was that was really impressive do we have any favorite players amongst them or teams um you guys anybody have a favorite player or team that we've come out to watch today rachel garcia and me guys oh my gosh <laughs> Down the left field line, this is going to be extra bases for Caroline Jacobson. And uh, she's into second with her first base hit 
of the season. Had been 0 for 6, but she had some of the best at-bats you're ever going to see yesterday without getting a hit. And she's the beneficiary right now. Kat, what's it like? You look at Caroline Jacobson. You guys played against each other a lot in the in the ACC, but now you're both rookies together in the same league. What is that where you have to, you get to play with the player you've been playing against this whole time? It's so cool um, to face all these players that I watched on TV or got to play against. But Caroline and I, I think, know each other pretty well. We faced each other while she was at Duke. We faced each other while she was at Clemson. But um, really great hitter, really great player. So it's really cool to play some pro with her now. Just saw a really cool interaction between Peyton St. George and Caroline Jacobson, who were together for Marissa Young at Duke. And Peyton St. George just gave up the first pro hit to Jacobson, and she smiled at her. Probably Aww. said, you're only getting a one. <laughs> That's great. That's good stuff That's there. Awesome. Kat, talk about college. You make the transition. Of course, we all watched you in Oklahoma City. Now you're out here in the rain. You got star of the stands. But give me one thing that you miss from college, but then also one thing that you like better about AU and being a pro. Um, yeah, I would say the transition has been pretty great so far. Everybody here at AU is just wonderful, um, you know, amazing at their jobs, amazing people. I would say I probably miss uh, from Florida State probably just being on the same team for months and months. You really get to get to know everybody and learn how to play as a team. So I would say I miss that. But I also really like the new scoring um, that we get to play with now. And I think it's really cool and has kind of just brought a whole new perspective of the game to me. So I've been really enjoying playing AU as well. Sliced into left field, looking up into the rain, catches made by Jasmine Jackson. All right, you're in the stands right now. You're getting a chance to watch one of the greatest college players ever. Uh, Jesse Warren, play third base. Obviously, she's a Florida State alum as well. Talk to me about the fellowship and what happens at Florida State, the great players that come through, and particularly Jesse Warren, what she meant to the Seminole program. Oh my gosh, Jesse is one of the all-time greats of Florida State. Uh, we never got a chance to play together. I came in right as she was graduating, but definitely knew all about Jesse Warren and all of her accolades. So it's really cool to get a chance to play with her now. But uh, just playing at Florida State and uh, learning from Lonnie Alameda was an incredible experience. And so we've definitely connected over that. And um, Josie is in this game as well. She yeah. knows all about playing at some FSU softball. And Ellie and Bryce are here. So it's really great to have that piece of family here at AU. Well, last weekend out of the gates, you had to face Josie. How was that when you have to face someone that you've been playing with that's on your team in college and now you're in the pros? It's funny. Um, it was fun facing her. I feel like I had faced her so many times in, oh, yeah, scrimmages. Uh, in a squad yep. games. <laughs> but um, super fun. And I think I ended up getting her out, but I'm sure I'll be facing her again <laughs> at some point this summer. So just excited for the matchup. It's always fun. Gwen Svekis, the veteran batting. Kat, you're on a team, Megan Faramo, rookie pitcher. You're a rookie pitcher. Brooke Yanez, Micah Sutherland. So much youth. You guys are all new to the pro game. What's it like just talking over strategy and figuring out your way as a pro with everyone else who's in the same shoes that you're in? It's honestly been so much fun. Megan has done an incredible job as captain, her first time being captain. And I think that she drafted a great team. And I think it's cool that we have all rookie pitchers and we've all just kind of been figuring it out together. Um, and obviously, thanks to Ellie, our facilitator, who's been amazing. But yeah, ball just I mean, eats up Sis Bates. Sorry about that. Ball just eats up Sis Bates, gets into left field. And that'll be a base set, I'd imagine for Gwen Speckis. Hey, Kat, thank you for joining us. Um, you're probably the only cat that I know that's not afraid of a little bit of water and rain. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's Kat Sandercock, who has been just a great addition to this year's Athletes Unlimited Championship season. Star in his stance. Official score has deemed that that's a base hit. A well, question for you, if it's a base hit, why is it not a double? I don't know, don't look at me. I'm not scoring. Yeah, official score said a single, <laughs> advanced to second on the throw, but if you're going to say it's a single, she got all the way to, it was not an error, she got all the way to second before the ball made it back to the infield. I'm going to fight for Gwen Speckis on this. I'm with you. I'm with you. And that ball got back by Sid Spates, which we do not see happen very often, but it was smoked. When the ball is hit that hard, you're going to reward with a base hit and went all the way out to the left center gap. Speckis. On second base. Oh, I got bad news for Gwen. Official score has just changed their mind. It's an error on Sis Bates. Here's Rachel Becker. 
from nearby Lindenhurst, Illinois. That is north of here, about an hour, close to the Wisconsin border. An error on Sis. Yeah. That's going to sit with me for a little bit. I'm not sure I, how I feel about it. Swing and a miss. Becker didn't start yesterday's game, but did come on. Had a nice at bat, drew a walk late in the game. Two and two to Becker. Infield has to come in all the way around with the runner on at third and just one out. Into left, this will score a run. Probably two, it will. That's gonna be a double for Becker. A two run double for the rookie. So the young players coming through this inning. That's two doubles by two first-year pros, Jacobson and Mal Becker. Just needed a couple of innings to get their feet wet, no pun intended, but Becker with two strikes goes up to get this pitch, laces this thing, and you can see where Jazz Jackson was playing and Victoria Hayward. They were really far in having to track this ball down all the way to the warning track, stand-up double easily for Rachel Becker. So another rookie, Josie Muffley, will bat. Already two rookies have gotten their first professional hit, both of them doubles here in the second inning. Jacobson, Becker, and now Muffley a chance to do the same thing. What are the odds of Muffley getting a double here? Three rookies getting their first base hit as professionals and all of them being doubles. I don't like when you ask me this because I wanted to have them. I'm kind of rooting for it. <laughs> I, I kind of am too. It would be pretty cool, but I don't think the odds are very good, so... I don't have a very politically correct answer on that. I guess maybe that's it. <laughs> Josie Muffley is from Portage, Michigan. It's actually probably straight due east of here, but you can't get there because there's a lake, Lake Michigan. So you got to go around Lake Michigan, so it's probably three hours drive. Portage is just outside of Kalamazoo. And if you've ever been to Portage, Michigan, you would know that it is the Celery City. That's what the nickname is. The celery city of Portage, Michigan. The soil is just perfect for making elite level celery. Do you have this stuff written down or is this Everyone just... Everyone who's driven past Portage, Michigan knows okay. about the celery city. This is just wisdom from years of wisdom travel of, and of broadcasting. Portage, Michigan. Okay. Yeah. I've got a lot of years ahead of me, so yeah, don't I worry. don't know these fun facts yes. like you do. But keep them coming, please. I'm being educated about coast to coast here. <laughs> got all our... Nuggets about North Carolina. We've got those out of the way. Chicago, some Romeo and Juliet cities. You were breaking Romeo it down. Romeo and Juliet, yes, yep. the sister See, cities. I'm trying to remember and retain this information so that I can use it later and try to be clever like you are. <laughs> Three balls and two strikes. St. George got Muffley to chase a changeup. See if she has two in a row. So a 2-2 tie. Two runs scored in the bottom of the first inning for Team Garcia, answered by two runs for Team Zirkel here in the second. This rain really just picked up the last 30 seconds. I feel like it is coming down now. You can see Muffley kind of wiping it off of her eyes, trying to make sure her vision is clear. You know, in a way, I almost think it's fair. You know, it's 60 players playing for themselves for a certain extent. Everyone's on the leaderboard trying to become the champion. And if game number one was affected because of rain, I think game number two should be affected by rain today. Absolutely, I'm with you. It was four, it was four innings, to my knowledge and memory, small memory that they played in the rain. It was like the one, two, three, four, and then it let up. Another first base hit of a professional career for someone on Team Zirkle here in the second inning. It's Muffley, not a double, but a single for her first professional hit. I was say, she should have kept running. Try and stretch that thing out. Maybe get 20 points. This is the pitch. The Off-speed curve. Too elevated, but a nice job there from Muffley. You can see her. She's out of her legs, but keeps her hands back. Has enough power to drive it up the middle. So a missed opportunity for Peyton St. George. Bottom part of the lineup with youth everywhere. And she gives up three hits to three rookies who had never successfully got a hit 
in pro ball until this inning. And now St. George is going to have to go to the top of the order and face the veteran Megan Zirkel, who has played more professional softball here at Athletes Unlimited than anyone in the history of this league. The absolute other end of the spectrum. Game number 72 with Athletes Unlimited for Morgan Zirkel. You can say we've gone from A to Z in terms of the spectrum with Zirkel batting. Runners on at the corners. Still just one out. Golfed into right field, may score a run. Lily Piper has to leap to make the catch. Her throw, not in time. Scoring from third on the sacrifice fly is Becker. That's going to add another run for Team Zirkle. It's also going to give Morgan Zirkle 10 points. Sacrifice flies are a plus 10. Morgan Zirkle swinging away. When she has power, it's usually to the right side. Pull power. We'll see her slap, drop a drag as well. Lily Piper out in right field. Almost had a look at a double play at first base. Here's Amanda Lorenz, seventh batter of the inning. Lorenz played collegiately at Florida. I bet she's played quite a bit in the rain. Yeah, Peyton St. George has got the towel in her back pocket, and then she's also using the rosin bag. It's pretty much all you can do at this point as a pitcher. Get a little rosin, pat it off on the towel. Try and keep that hand inside your glove. That's the key, is you don't want the ball to be wet. So sometimes as a pitcher, you'll have the ball in your hand, you'll kind of spin it around. But when you're in rain, you want to just make sure that ball's in your glove. And as soon as she takes the rosin, she's going to wipe it, and then she's going to take her hand right to her glove. She's put the rosin right on the ball. I didn't know you were allowed to do that. No, no, she wiped it off. I saw her. On the ground, that is about as soft as Amanda Lorenz is ever going to hit a ball, and she's going to get a single out of it. What a great start to her year. Amanda Lorenz is now 7 for 11 against some of the best pitchers in the world in the first two weeks of Athletes Unlimited. Quick chat from Deja Molipola with Peyton St. George. She's not putting that right on the ball? Oh, she might have been, but I, she wipes it off with her hand, but it, I couldn't tell if that was the back of her glove or inside the ball. Q shot, a lot of spin. Sis Bates gets Gibson. Side is retired, but three runs score for Peyton St. George, important to know, only one of them was earned. It is now a 3-2 lead for Team Zirkel over Team Garcia.
Team Garcia scored two times in the bottom of the first inning to win the first. Team Zirkle bounces right back to put three runs on the board in the top of the second. Can Team Garcia answer that? Let's check in with a third member of our crew, Savannah Collins. Savannah, what's going on? Thanks, Eric. You know, coming into this game, both of these teams are looking for their first win of the weekend, and that takes some resetting. So we were talking about on broadcast how we felt like that Bruin battle had so much intensity, and they agreed. They said that felt like a week five medals on the line game, but we're only in week two. So for this squad, it came from a late night text from Victoria Hayward saying, hey, losing like that is the worst, to be in a battle and come up short. But let's not let those win points that we may have given up define us. Let's redefine our team today. There's a similar sentiment with the Blue Squad. You know, for them, it was pre-game today, sitting down, talking in their gate, so the little questionnaires that they do with one another to build team chemistry. And the question today was, what do you do well on the softball field? And then what are some things that you can improve, too? They talked about in their game yesterday that as those inning points just continued to accumulate with that 1-0 score, that they really started to feel the pressure of that. They leaned into it a little too hard. So today is about leaving it all out on the field, finding the fun, leaning on each other, as both these teams are in somewhat of a similar situation as we're going back and forth when they answer on the scoreboard. So we'll see how they both handle this situation after having some time to regroup this morning and last night. Leaning on each other. I like that. Thank you so much, Savannah. Bottom third in the order for Team Garcia. Jasmine Jackson, Lily Piper, and Sis Bates. Jackson, an original member here with Athletes Unlimited. Count is now three and one to Jackson. It's great stuff from Savannah talking about how it's all about the rebound because this week is, or this week, this league is only five weeks, so it's short. And of course, the motto is every moment counts, but that's it. Nice play. Masson got it on the tip of her glove, gets it over to first in time, out number one. And so there's no time to sit around and sulk about how things went wrong and you were on the other side of one hit here, one pitch there. And all of these players, you look at the rookies, you look at the veterans. I love that the text, of course, came from Victoria Hayward. She's the veteran, one of the key parts of this league altogether. And trying to rally her team a little bit, like, hey, let's flip the switch. We still got two games ahead of us, and this one very important. But I felt that way about the Faremo Garcia matchup last night as well. That felt like a medal game. That felt like a week five. It's coming down to the wire. Whoever wins takes the whole thing type of game. And it was just so interesting that it came. You think about the week as a whole, it's kind of a random night. Game two, day one, week two. But the intensity. Nope. Yep, you're totally right. <laughs> it was, it seemed like it should have counted for six games. Lily Piper flies out to Caroline Jacobson. Two down, and Piper passes along a little local knowledge to Sis Bates, who's next in line. After giving up the walk, the single, and the double to Muli Pola, one, two, and three for Team Garcia against Masson. Mariah is now retired five in a row. Strikeout, a couple of ground ball outs, and a fly ball out. And now she's one out away from getting back into that dugout with an inning win. I'm wondering if Mariah and Tori Vidalis are roommates. They have the same hair. They have the braids <laughs> with the purple. I'm going to go with yes. I would guess that maybe the same person is doing their hair, not each other. But I'm not an expert. There's always one. Every team you have a braider. It was not me. I was always getting my hair braided from my teammates, but there's always one, at least one girl on the team that is like such a good breeder and can do all the different styles. And so whenever you're sometimes on the road in a hotel, everyone goes to her hotel room and it's like a line. You're at a salon and you're waiting your turn very patiently and you're trying to be so nice. They're like, really, you two? Like, yes, please. We're gonna figure it, out. We won Savannah yesterday. <laughs> Savannah has been uber impressive so far through the first couple of weeks. She's gonna get to the bottom of who is Who's the team braider? Yeah, who's doing it? It's so important because especially if you win and your hair was a certain way, well, hey, you did my hair. We're doing the exact same style again. And then, of course, if you lose, it's like, all right, let's switch it up. Can we do two braids, three braids? What are we doing? 
Still a ball and two strikes to Sis Bates. Number nine hitter. Unless Team Garcia can pick itself up off the mat here in the third, second inning. It's going to be an inning win for Team Zirkel. They scored three times top of our second inning. Softly right side. No one's at first. Oh, the second baseman, Muffley, did her job where she needed to be. Side is retired. That's six in a row retired by Masson. And it's an inning win for Team Zirkel. It's a great lot. And the previous owner was really into DIY. Ah. Vintage Y2K. Yes. Oh, retro Samsung. Very impressive. You think so? You like being in other people's business. It make it very challenging not to be. We were to The Venture X card from Capital One gives you premium travel benefits, like two times miles on... I've seen some passionate college football fans. Sling Blue 40! Sling Blue 40! But with Sling TV, some are taking their love to the next level. <laughs> Right on the numbers. I can still suit up, right, Des? No. Yeah! Let's not. With Sling, you can stream college football on ESPN for the best price. The college football you love. The live TV you love. Hey, can you pass the dip? Vintage what, UK? Yes. Oh, retro Samsung. Very impressive. You think so? At at and it's worth a new Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5. Any year, any condition. <laughs> Even that condition. It's a great lot. And the previous owner was really into DIY. Ah. Is that a chinchilla? Yes. Stair slide. A Murphy tub. Finding a perfect home is hard. Thankfully, Geico makes it easy to bundle and save. Here's where legends are born. And every match is a spectacle. For the love of football. For the love of La Liga. We made it to the third inning. It's a 3-2 lead for Team Zirkel over Team Garcia. Each team has won an inning. Peyton St. George back in the middle of the circle. And there's something we say here with Athletes Unlimited. If Victoria Hayward wasn't involved, did it really happen? <laughs> she wears number one because she was the first person to commit to Athletes Unlimited in any sport. She has been around for it all. Played at Washington, going to go back to Washington. Signed up as an assistant coach after some great times at San Diego State. She has meant everything to this wonderful league, and she's going to join us right now. Hey, Vic, how you doing out in center field? Hey, Eric. I'm, I mean, I'm good. We're going to score some more runs, so I'll be even better, <laughs> but we're good right now. Happy to be here with you guys. Give us a weather report. What's it like? Ironically, in this very moment, it's great. It's not raining, but um, it is a little humid and um, very wet, very wet, very slick. Um, but happy that Peyton gets an inning with uh, a dry ball. Is the turf as an outfielder, how does it play for you? Do you oh, have to be careful when you run? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, it just, and it picks up speed as the ball is hit. So, like, you saw Gwen's ball to this. Oh, yeah. Nice job, Kate. Um, just absolutely picks up speed when it goes. So the reads are a little bit different. And then just when you're picking up the ball, just making sure you're taking your time a little bit. So our combo in, the, in that happening was just like, if we have the chance, we're just going to try to run and make them make a throw with a wet ball. Vic, we were talking to Savannah between the last inning, and she was reporting about how both of these teams were just so close, one hit there, one pitch there, and that pitcher's duel for the doubleheader as a whole yesterday, and then that you sent out a team text about the rebound and going into today. Can you kind of relate to your rookies or maybe, you know, your new team as you are the veteran about how important each turnaround is? Yeah, I think. Oh, so good, Pate. Love that. Um, I think just, you know, in a game like yesterday, we were one hit away from being on the other side of it. So I think that just there's a new day. There's a lot of points and money on the line. So the faster we can respond, especially having the other team had experienced the same thing. So I think it's just really easy to get so caught up in the leaderboard and just your own performance. I find myself doing it. And so I know that nice job, Jesse. I know that if yes, Rachel, that was a little bit scary. <laughs> Wet ball. Wet ball. That's right. Um, so I know if I'm thinking that after being in this league for a while and you know, I know that everyone else is probably thinking it. So that's probably the little coach in me a little bit. 
What was it about yesterday? We were talking about how both games kind of felt like week five medal games. Like, the, I don't know what it was with the intensity and the pressure. Did it feel the same for you guys? Yeah, it was a lot. And I think just we were so excited about this team. So I think, too, when you have expectations about a great team with great people and people you're excited to play with, um, just you want it more. So I think that kind of like postseason, end of the season vibe of like, dang, yeah. you're just waiting for this thing to come together. And then it doesn't. You start to press a little bit. And the zone was big. Megan was throwing awesome. She was amazing last night. She and Jordan worked really well together. So just, you know, when you want it really badly, I mean, every game matters, and that's real. Here we go, Pate. We were talking earlier today about how it seems as if when you find coaches every level of softball, they're former pitchers, they're former catchers, and they're former center fielders. You have the absolute perfect vantage point to watch the game and see it develop. Do you agree? I do. I know. I had a little FOMO last week. Not Everyone's like complaining about the strike zone, and I'm just yelling things from left field, not knowing like <laughs> what's actually happening. I'm like, if Halo's mad about it, I'm going to be mad about it. Right. Yeah, let's. I'll ride with you. So, no, it's fun just to, you know, we'll have some different people. Playing with Maddie Husky yesterday and Wright was awesome, and just being able to, like, f do some positioning things. Oh, Look at on, the girls. spin on that. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if you had a read on that one, Vic, but that ball started right, and then it took a left-hand turn to Harshman. That's like a Sid McKinney special. She does weird things to the ball. She's so fast, too. She's so fast. Who's the fastest in this league? I was saying maybe you or Zerk. But... Zerk's definitely got me. Okay. I think as I'm getting older, I know I've lost this step for sure. We got we to gotta <laughs> play with the smarts, less speed. But yeah. Sid McKinney is... She, she might, I would love to see her and Zirkel battle it out for fastest in the league. That'd be pretty fun. Yeah, she's a new addition with some speed for the rookie class for sure. Yeah. She can move. She might steal here. She's, a, she's afraid to steal. She what? won't steal. Are you just ah. speaking that into existence? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little rookie hazing there from the veteran. She's not going to do it. No way. She won't do it. No. Nope. She won't do it. When I was her teammate, I really, really, really wanted her to do it. So if she all of a sudden decides to, I'm going to have to have some words with her after the game. <laughs> I was talking about how, as a pitcher, I always, you know, if I'm frustrated with the strike zone, I would turn to the center fielder, and if they're validating my frustration, it made me feel a little bit, you know, better about myself. Yeah. Do you love seeing the strike zone and being out there, or is it frustrating because there's nothing you can do about it and you're watching it in front of you? I like it. I mean, I love it as a hitter, too. But I think yeah. just, like, as you play with people more, kind of understanding what the pitcher needs in that moment from you. Like, sometimes they totally need you to be like, that was a horrible call, even though it was totally maybe the right call. Like, they need you to be... You're exposing us. <laughs> it's so true, though. They need you to, like, have their back in that moment. And then there's times where it was like, last night I was just trying to, like, calm Rachel. Like, Rachel just needed to be calmed down in that moment and, like, not worry about it. So I think there's different moments and just as you play with more people and understand them a little bit. Um, that's, I think that's what I love about this league is, like, learning so many people and figuring out how, you know, you can gel with them. It's so true, though. I would always look out if, you know, I'm feeling down about myself. The center fielder's like, no, that's a strike. I'm like, yeah, it was. Thank you totally. so much. Thank you. I'm glad we're on the same page. No, it feels a, less lonely. No, it's 100% true. <laughs> and they're really the only one because the catcher's, you know, doing their thing, calling the pitches and talking to the umpire. So you just kind of need somebody that's out of the infield like, hey, what do you think? Oh, yeah. No, and I'm yelling and I'm loud and I'll, they'll, they'll know how I feel about it. Svekis, two-run homer. Wow. Two strikes, two outs. Svekis, a homer, her first this season. <laughs> a little baby celebration there for the baby blues, but Gwen Svekis is not a baby. She's a veteran on the baby blues. Full count. This is dead center, as good as you're going to swing it. Not a bad pitch in a full count situation. You just watch her go down and get this pitch. Stays in her legs, hands travel well, keep it straight. And for Victoria Hayward, nothing you can do out there in center field. Just watch it over your head. So that's now five unanswered for Team Zirkel after Team Garcia had the 2-0 lead in the first inning. Here we go, P. We got you, babe. Vic, you still with us? Yeah. Uh, that home run by Svek is kind of rare. We haven't seen the ball fly nearly as much as we have in years past. Is it all wind-related? Is it pitching-related? What have you 
surmised? Um, yeah, I think the wind has definitely been blowing in more than normal, I would say. Um, but I think just the pitchers in this league just continue to get better, I think. Just the pitchers that we have. I mean, Peyton is so good. She has so many speeds. So to really get on time with something is, is tough to do. So that's been really nice to see, especially coming from AUX and just how crazy that was. Back, you got room, you got room. Good job. Jasmine Jackson makes the play. Hey, Victoria, thank you again for everything you've been to this league and thanks for talking to us. Oh, you're awesome. Okay, we're gonna go start some runs. Oh, I'm up. Again, multiple runs scored for Team Zirkel. They had a three spot in the second. They put up two more in the third, trying to win another inning and get 10 more points for doing so. Five to two is our overall score. Team Zirkel leads Team Garcia. Everyone loves to rep Athletes Unlimited, and you can too. Be sure to check out the new AU softball merch for the season, including personalized player tees. Go to shop.auprosports.com to get yours today. With Kenzie Fowler and Savannah Collins, I'm Eric Collins. The young baby blues making it happen for Team Zirkel. They were down two to nothing after the first inning, but they've scored five unanswered. And Mariah Masson has figured it out. She's retired six in a row. Top of the order, Hayward, Harshman, and Muli Pola. Second time through the lineup now for Team Garcia facing Masone. First pitch, Mariah trying to give Victoria a little bit of an off speed there, just a different look. Didn't really see her throw that pitch very often in the first inning now. It's one of those things where as a pitcher, I talked about it with Megan Framo yesterday, where if you have a pitch to save, you do it until the team proves to you that you've got to use it. So you want to hold your cards as close and as tight to yourself as you can until you've got to deal them all out. But it's still a new pitch for her in her development, just in terms of what she utilized in college. Didn't really throw a ton of change-ups because she's throwing 70 miles an hour, drop side to side, working the rise. Line her right to the shortstop. That's called an atom ball. Right to Sydney McKinney, one down. All right, Kenzie Fowler, All-American pitcher at Arizona. Would you ever consider pitching with a glove that had a hole in it. No. Mariah Masson right now does, and theoretically, <laughs> a hitter could be trying to look in there to see your grip, try to figure out what you're gonna throw. I know, I saw that as well. I thought that was interesting, but no, I would not. But it, I was always so jealous of the infielders and outfielders. They always have the coolest custom webbing, and as a pitcher, you have like the longest, most boring glove. And it, back in my day, what, you weren't allowed to like have cool colors, so it had to just be like brown or black. So maybe she's like, you know what, it's worth it to have a cool glove. And I'm you know, kind of with her on that, because that's a cool looking glove. That pitch hit Harshman. So it's eight points the hard way, eight points with a bruise for Kelsey Harshman. She's aboard, her perfect day continues. She singled her first time up. Looks like uh, Deja Mulipola is having deja vu. Looks like the same Deja Mulipola we saw last year when she was the champion. She's hitting the ball hard again. Slow start to her season, but she's got the mojo. One ball and one strike. I looked at the leaderboard beginning of the day today. 60 athletes here. Deja was 55th. 
after winning it all last year. Had a two-run double her last time up today. And now she's down to the count of ball and two strikes. We talked to Deja a little bit yesterday and touched on the pressure that she's maybe internally facing or externally, whatever it is. When you are the reigning champ, there's all the eyes are going to be looking at you. You're going to have to do all the extra video promos and photo shoots. You have the new swaggy patch that's on your sleeve just as a reminder of what you accomplished the first position player to ever do it in AU that's a lot softly right side again Muffley's gonna have to go to first and then you get a chance Gibson can't get it cleanly over to Muffley everyone's safe that'll be an error I wonder, is there a chance that maybe it's an easier play if Muffley comes over and makes the play and not Gibson? Yeah, it's hit so slowly. You could tell Gibson, she wanted that out, that lead out at second base, and it just got a little bit ahead of her. The ball comes out of her glove. You have to wonder by the time the ball comes into her glove, does it have that wetness on it that makes it slip out? Well, she wanted that lead out. run lead here in the third inning. Are you really going for the lead runner as opposed to just getting the sure out at first? It might have been her better play because the, that's the way that she was attacking the ball and her momentum was going that way. Of course, Kelsey Harshman runs pretty well down the line. So a threatening situation, Rachel Garcia. 2-0 to Garcia, so a great hitter's count for one of the better hitters in this year's field. Quality strike. Not much Garcia could do with that. Three and one. So Masone really cruising along. She'd retired seven in a row. Then she hits Harshman. The error by Gibson. And now the 3-1 to Garcia. Quality steamer. Three and two. Oof. There's two pitches there in this at bat that Rachel has taken, and she can drive those pitches. That's a pitch that she should be sitting on. Home run type of pitch that she can hit. And the walk. So the bases are loaded without the benefit of a base hit for Team Garcia. Mm. This young Team Zirkel. 5-2 lead, trying to win the third inning. And with one out, ball hadn't left the infield. And we've got bases loaded. For Masson, that's the second walk allowed. And Taylor Edwards will be the batter. Good news, bad news for Team Garcia. Edwards, one of the most experienced hitters in the world today. Bad news is, doesn't run particularly well. Could see a double play if she hits this in the wrong spot. Here, the infield for Zirkel. You're thinking double play all day. A lot of power hitters on the bases. Taylor Edwards, Rachel Garcia. There's opportunity there for the infielders. Oh, that's a tough break for Edwards. It's been that type of weekend for Taylor. She struck out three times yesterday against Megan Faremo. 0-2. Oh Masone looking to wipe out Edwards. Do it again. Masone doing a really nice job the last two pitches, spreading the plate ahead. One and two was ahead, 0 oh and two. And then you saw the waste pitch outside, comes back in inside. But there's nothing Taylor Edwards can do with that pitch except foul it off. And you continue to spread the plate. A little off speed. 
So now you've kind of seen everything, right? You've shown her the low and out, you've gone low and in, you've gone slow and low. Do you go high and in? That's the only other kind of waste pitch in this situation that we haven't seen from the zone. Just got to make sure you do not miss over the heart of the plate. Foul from the get-go. That's it. And so quickly you're going to see a chat with Gwen Speckis because that's pretty much emptying the tank in terms of waist pitches, getting ahead pitches, 1-2, two, oh, two type counts. And so, okay, she's seen it all. What are you feeling comfortable with? And you go right back to it. Seventh pitch of the at-bat. And Team Garcia, they're down five to two, but they are in it big time. Bunch of top steppers in that dugout. You can hear them. Everything going in their favor. They are all over it. Yeah. Chopper plays at the plate. There's one. And Svekas doesn't dare throw to first. Two down. Worth the wait for Masson. A huge second out here. Bases loaded. Rolls an easy ground ball. Not quick enough. The ball was just hit a little bit too slowly for Team Zirkle to turn a double play. But still, you get that lead out. And you get rid of Taylor Edwards. Here's Jesse Warren. Hasn't hit the ball out of the infield all weekend long. That just tells me she's due. Well, she's been getting jammed a lot. So right there, you see already Masson going hard and in. And Jesse Warren, she's standing um, pretty on the plate. Usually I see her further back off of the plate. You see her back foot just an inch behind the chalk line. And two back-to-back -back pitches. Just respecting the power, but also it's what you saw. It's the data. It's the scouting. Yesterday, we showed those little bloop shots while they were jammed hard in. 0-2. Oh, Little flare! Hangs up and the catch is made by Jacobson. Great job by Masson. Bases loaded, one out. She gets Edwards, she gets Warren. It's another inning win for Team Zirkle. YouTube is now the exclusive home of NFL Sunday Ticket. Does this mean you can watch NFL Sunday Ticket without putting a satellite dish on your roof? Does this mean you can watch your favorite teams out of market Sunday games? Does this mean all the players are technically YouTube celebrities now? Yes, to every one of those things. Sign up now and get $50 off NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV. Become an auntie, book a flight, stay four nights, meet the baby, make the baby cry, give the baby back, Fly home. Silver tier in a single trip. Join one key and move up tiers fast. People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket. Like one of our favorite customers, Michelle. I started my own app company, and with Cricket, I'm able to answer calls from my engineers and investors and know my signal's going to be great. If I had to describe Cricket in two words, they would be reliable and affordable. 5G boss mode activate. Smile, you're on cricket. To shave or not to shave? Shave. It's true. To shave or not to shave? That. It means the world to be the head coach at Marshall. Coaching at your alma mater is such, you know, a special opportunity and to do it you know, now I still having the opportunity to play is just a dream come true that I didn't even know was possible. Playing at Athletes Unlimited has prepared me to be a coach in so many ways. You get here and you get to play with so many different athletes, learn their playing styles. So that's been cool to, you know, learn from my peers here at AU and be able to implement that into some of, you know, the things I do as a coach. Morgan Zirkle will hit second here in our fourth inning. If she's out recruiting new head coach at Marshall, all she got to do is say, hey, turn on the game tonight. 
not only is Morgan Zirkle going to play and demonstrate the Marshall way, but two of her assistant coaches on the same team, Sydney McKinney and Allie Harrell, both assistant coaches at Marshall. And just like Morgan Zirkle, Allie Harrell is a alum of Marshall. She joins us now for a chair chat. Hey, Allie, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I am fantastic. Uh, first things first, looks like you're dry. Does that mean the rain has stopped? It has stopped, but um, I'm not dry. <laughs> <laughs> I've been standing out in the rain. Hey, I know that you're uh, a Marshall lifer just like uh, Morgan Zirkle is. Tell me about Marshall University. Uh, tell me about Huntington, West Virginia. What's it all about? You know, it's a special place. Um, nothing's really like it. Uh, it's very cliche to say, but I 100% believe it's true. Once you come, you're kind of just drawn and you don't really want to leave. It's a great environment, especially for athletics, but within the community, it's truly, truly special. Off the end of the bat, this is falling. It'll drop. That'll be a base hit yes, for Joe. Josie Muffley. So Muffley didn't have a base hit in her pro career until the second inning. She's now got two. You guys are the baby blues because of all the rookies. Yes, all the youngins. Yeah, so you're not a rookie anymore. Is there any difference between yourself as a rookie and then you're coming in with all the experience? Um, I still feel a little young, but... Oh, you are. You're definitely young. Well, yeah, 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 for <laughs> sure. But I think um, I have that little bit of experience through asking all the questions last year and kind of getting AU and AUX last year under my belt. So it definitely is helpful, um, especially to then help the rookies a little bit. So it's good to have that extra year in. Hey, Ali, you were a biology major when you were at Marshall and academic All-American, all these fancy things. What was the thought process there? You just enjoy biology or what do you want to do eventually when you stop playing softball? Uh, med school. So I have a dream to be an OBGYN. So I get to play and I'm be a coach up here. and That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Grow the game, but I also have a dream to uh, change the maternal health um, in our country and bring new life into the world. Yes. So. Bless people. Both is great. <laughs> Thank you so much. I mean, we need people like that, and that's so amazing. And we were talking to Victoria Hayward and about Victoria Hayward about how there's so many assistant coaches. You just look at the roster on all four teams that are continuing to play. What is it? Does it help you a lot, or what does it do for you in your coaching career that you're starting with Coach Zirkle and you get to pick all the brains from all these elite players? I think you said it exactly. I get to be around 60 of the best athletes. And I think that really helps going into assistant coaching and kind of gaining any knowledge you have from anyone within the league. And it's just been great to be here these past three weeks and learn from all the other assistant coaches, but then learn from those who aren't coaches yet or um, just have something to give. That was a really goofy play. Sydney <laughs> Little John Watkins, who just come in to pitch the, this fourth inning, she didn't land in her proper spot, and she was on the way down when the ball came back to her. What are the odds? And so she slipped on her drag foot, and of course, Morgan Zirkle, if you're going to slip, she can basically walk to first base. That's how fast she is. It looks like Sydney is okay. Yeah, they're going to rule that an infield base hit for Zirkle, so plus 10 for her. Runners on at first and at second. So, uh, Ali, just so we're square here, med school, are you doing that Wow, you're going to be an assistant coach? That seems like a lot on your plate. I'm not. Not right now. Um, I thought about possibly doing some type of master's here, either this year or in the spring. But I haven't fully um, thought into what master's exactly. But right now, it's just the coaching and the playing. Okay. You were one of the best ever play at Marshall. I talked to Morgan Zirkle before. She said that Marshall meant everything to her. It was the only scholarship opportunity that she had. And she's made it her life, basically. Uh, did you have other choices, or did you just, was Marshall the one that just decided that you were perfect for them? Amanda, um, it's the one I decided was perfect for me, okay. and that fit really well with um, what I wanted out of my college career, and which was to have that atmosphere and a comfortability in playing and being able to do it well at a pretty good level. So it kind of gave me the best options for that. Yeah, 390 batting average, 53 career homers. I think you did it pretty well at Marshall. Hey, thank Allie, you. thank you so much for talking to us. Yeah, thank you so much. Three consecutive hits for the Baby Blues. Team Zirkle, that's an RBI base hit for Amanda Lorenz. And the lead is now 6-2. Six, six unanswered runs for Team Zirkle.
I'm going to go out there right now. Just the second week of the season. Amanda Lorenz has a chance to be uh, the all-time leader in terms of single-season batting average. It may happen. She currently, 3-for-3 three three today, she is now 8-for-12 on the year. 750 batting average. No wrong, 8 for 12, 666, sorry. So 12 at bats plus the six walks. I don't want to screw this up again. She's 12 for 18, right? In terms of on base percentage, that would be 75%. No, I'm still all screwed. I'm going to believe you no matter what because 12 plus six is 18. Feels like she's been on base Eight, every time. 14 for 18. <laughs> She's 14 for 18 in terms of getting on base. She has only been retired four times so far through five games. Carousel's in motion. Look at Gibson on her way to second. Look at Lorenz steaming her on third. It's a two-run double for Gibson. What offense for the Baby Blues. A day after scoring just one run, they now had eight here in the fourth inning. I was a little worried that maybe it was just the chair chat luck of having Allie Harrell on, where it was base hit, base hit, base hit for her team, but it continues. So exhale for the Baby Blues. Four hits in a row, and just a different variety of, of hits in this inning. Seen a little bit of everything. Three runs in the second, two runs in the fifth, three here in the fourth. Delaney Wiz tries the shortstop Bates. No chance to make that play. That's now five consecutive hits for Zirkel. Let's check in with Savannah Collins. Hey, Savannah, what's going on? Hey, I, coming into this game, I thought it was so neat to see Amanda and Gibby back-to-back -back in the lineup. They have so much history, Danny, back to AUX. So when Danielle Gibson was a rookie, Amanda Lorenz is really who took her under her wing. And those two have just been buddies when it comes to hitting and lifting each other up. And if you play AU Fantasy, they were who I was had on my players to watch this week. Because really, without being captains, they were two of the best hitters coming into week two. So having them back to back in the lineup, especially two hitters who play off of each other. They talk a lot about their swings. They go to the cage together. They break apart pitchers together. So having them back to back in the lineup, we saw it today. We saw it last night too. Those two are tough to face back to back. Yeah, it's just it's amazing to me. Those are really, well, you got Zirkle as well, but there's so much youth with the Zirkle team. It's amazing how well they have turned it around playing against a team with not only veteran experienced players on Team Garcia, but accomplished Olympians and Absolutely. And you think about Danielle Gibson and Amanda Lorenz. They're not rookies, but they still feel so young in their careers. I want to see both of those young women play for 10 more years. That's how good they are. And, you know, you think, not, not to think too far ahead, but the Olympics in 2028, there's going to be some players that are in this league that are going to be contention for that roster. And so you have to have a league like this to continue to foster that talent. And Danielle Gibson and Amanda Lorenz are two of our best. Infield base hit perfectly placed by Sydney McKinney. Second hit for McKinney in the ball game. And the bases are loaded. Just a ton of traffic against Sydney Little John Watkins here in the fourth inning. Still one out. Little John Watkins has only thrown 19 pitches. He's already faced seven batters. He's getting ambushed right now. Zvekas last time up an inning ago, swatting a homer. Two-run shot that won the third inning for Team Zirkel. That home run from Gwen was different pitcher, Peyton St. George. Sydney Littlejohn coming in on relief. Righty, righty. They'll throw a curveball, Sydney Little John. It's really the pitch that she throws, and I'm not exaggerating, probably 98% of the time. It's just a variation of height, 
location, whether it's on the inside part of the plate or outside part of the plate, it's usually going to be that curve. So if you're Gwen Svekis, you're really going to go into your bat sitting one side of the plate. Of course, when you have two strikes, you have to protect. Open up the zone a little bit more. Softly, first baseman Garcia makes the play. Two down. So Team Zirkle is now officially batted around. The ninth batter of the inning, Rachel Becker. Becker, 43rd on the leaderboard out of 60 players. Began today, 45th. Smoothed up a couple of spots. Still a lot of points on the line for inning wins and a game win and chance to get some stats. Good start to her day. I like the details in Sydney Little John's Watkins braid. I've been talking braids today, so I like her braid. Good little shout out there. It's got some nice details. I'm not sure what it is in the braid, but I'm here for it. I'm always looking. 2 0. Oh. Yes. Having a hard time locating the curveball. It's 3 0. Oh. No place to put Becker. Got to be a strike here. On 3 0, she throws the curveball. It's just the, the movement on that pitch. It starts in the other batter's box. And then by the time Rachel Becker sees it come into the glove of Taylor Edwards, it's over the heart of the plate. It's so much spin. Yep, again. 3 1, she throws a curveball. Throw it again. You have to wait and be patient with that pitch and trust that it's going to break over the heart of the plate. You can't go get it. If you go get it, you're going to be out. Swatted into center field. Two runs will score. The beat continues for Team Zirkle. That was a professional at bat for Rachel Becker. Looking like a pro. Mr. Second Week is a pro. Drives in a pair. It's a 10-2 lead. This is what I'm talking about, seeing it deep. Still actually a little bit in front of this, but her hands stay back, legs bleed out a little, but stayed back enough to let that backdoor curve come back into the left-handed hitter and drives it to the right side of the outfield. So this is the ninth spot in the order. Tenth batter of the inning for Team Zirkle, Josie Muffley. Into center field. That's a carbon copy of the previous base hit. Another run scores. An 11 2 lead for Team Zirkle. Good golly. Some confident swings for Team Zirkle. And I think uh, Sydney Little John Watkins is going to be lifted. Little John Watkins was hitting the mitt, didn't walk anyone, but everything put in play, had eyes, was finding a hole, and it's already been six runs scored here in the fourth inning. So we're going to have a new pitcher, Shannon Sale, come in. We'll talk about her when we come back. I was talking to the doorman in my building. He says, when's the next equalizer coming? <laughs> I say, why do you guys like that movie so much? He says, because you get the people that we want to get. Who are you getting this time? Whoever it is, I'm going to get them for you. Whatever you and your friends do, do it somewhere else. He's a common man. He doesn't fly around with capes or anything. I like Kate, though. <laughs> MLB chooses T-Mobile for Business for 5G solutions to not only enhance the fan experience, but to advance how the game is played. Now's the time to see what America's largest 5G network can do for your business. 
The non-breaded Popeye's blackened chicken sandwich is back. Marinated in bold Louisiana spices. Without the breading, this juicy filet is served classic or spicy on a toasted Brioche bun. Try it for just $4.99. No breading, all flavor. Love that chicken from Popeye's. To shave or not to shave? Shave. It's true. To shave or not to shave? That. Fly to Paris, see the tower, smaller than you expected. Wait in line, see the Mona Lisa, smaller than you expected. Check in, see your room, bigger than you expected. Join One Key, where gold and platinum members get travel perks like room upgrades. New pitcher, second of the inning, third of the game for Team Garcia. Shannon Sale comes out of the pen in relief of Sydney, Little John Watkins. And good time for relief. You could tell that Team Zirkle had really figured out the curveball from Sydney Little John Watkins. And we haven't seen Shannon Sale this weekend yet, so bring her in, Oklahoma alum. Throws hard. Rise curve combo in the upper 60s. Runners on at first and at third. Two outs. Morgan Zirkle. So far this inning, we have had. Seven hits. All of this has been done by putting the ball in play. There haven't been any walks. No one's been hit. There hasn't been an error. I have eight. Oh. One, two, three, Aha. four, five, I'm six, I'm finally seven. right. One time this, this weekend, I got you on one thing. Eric's been beating me at like... I still don't know how I get it wrong. Every MVP. Oh, Muffley's got two hits in the inning. Yeah, we've had some friendly competitions up here, uh, so... Yeah, you totally got me. Yes. I'm still behind, but... Okay. Muffley just stole the base. I'm saying that's got to be stolen base, right? That's not indifference. Yes, stole base. So Muffley just got a steal, which is something that is totally appropriate in 11 2 game. Yep. Everything counts. You're trying to get points any way you can. Money is on the line. You go get it. That's a smart play by Muffley. Now all of a sudden you start thinking about her possibly being one of the MVPs. Three for three with a steal. It's going to be hard to decipher. Right, a lot of game left to be played, but a lot of heroes offensively so far for Zirkel. Here's your in-game leaderboard. Josie Muffley, because of that steal, has tied Gwen Svekas with 60 points. Yeah, there we go. And Zirkel is walked. Walks plus eight. So the bases, again, are loaded. There's your in-game leaderboard, and it is dominated by players on Team Zirkel. So in our first game, we had MVP one was Alicia Ocasio, and then MVP two was Mia Davidson. Is correct. That correct. And Bubba Nichols was MVP three. three. Okay, so see, I was guessing, I was going to say Bubba Nichols would get MVP two, so advantage Eric. So we're even. We're Splits even. out. Even Steven. Oh, my goodness. Amanda Lorenz with the bases loaded. We've had one grand slam so far this season. It was Mia Davidson, week one. Fourth inning, fourth at bat for Amanda Lorenz. Very rarely you can make this statement. We're in the fourth inning and already every player on Team Zirkle has a hit and has scored a run. You are correct. Wow. Ball and two strikes. Sale trying to get back into that dugout. And she will. The rare strikeout of Amanda Lorenz. Lorenz had been three for three. Sale gets her. Major damage done. Team Zirkle, they lead by a bunch.
You want to be like the greats? First, believe you are. Greatness requires drip, not like that, like this. The greats aren't afraid to fail. They're fueled by it. Trophies require greatness, but greatness doesn't require trophies. Because greatness isn't about what you've done, it's about what you do next. Team Zirkel leads Team Garcia by a score of 11 to 2, bottom of the fourth inning. The impressive rookie, Caroline Jacobson, wearing a microphone. Let's go into the game with Air National Guard. Her rookie year, she didn't have multiple speeds like Yeah, this. she didn't. Okay. She used to like try to throw a changeup and it wasn't very good. And then she had like the off-speed rise. Yeah, she's kind of like an off-speed. Get down. Get down. I told her last night, I was like, I'm gonna get a first one. I was like, uh-oh. I wanted to say Also, could've been bad if she caught that. I was like, ah! I wouldn't say I'm slow, but I'm definitely not the fastest in the world, so. Caroline Jacobson getting her first pro hit against her former Duke Blue Devil teammate, Peyton St. George. That's what she was talking about. Jacobson now 40th out of 60 players in the league. And she's getting a whole bunch of points this afternoon. Everyone in Team Zirkle, so far so good. They are dominating here in the middle innings. They already have 11 runs scored. Beneficiary of all that offense, Mariah Masson. She gave up the two runs in the first inning. Zeros since. Down the third baseline foul off the bat of Jasmine Jackson. It'll be Jackson, Lily Piper, and Sis Bates here in the fourth inning. All right, chair check today. Star in the stands is uh, Kat Sandercock. She pitched in our first game, and she's still with us. You're braving the weather. Is it stopped raining? What's the deal now, weather-wise? It's off and on, so we keep pulling the umbrellas out and then putting them back away, but not too bad. Pretty impressive performance by the young players on Team Zirkle. You're a young player, rookie as well. It's pretty cool when you can see players fresh out of college, first year as a pro, being able to acclimate as quickly as they have. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, it's really cool to see Josie out there doing her thing and just all the rookies on the team. I think it's a super young team. That's why they're the baby blues. So just really fun to watch, but um, it's a really cool environment and it's easy to come in and feel comfortable and thrive. So it's fun to see. I don't think we've touched on your team name this week. What are you guys? We are Meg Stallions. Uh -huh. uh, our shout out to our captain, Megan Framo. She's been awesome, so. I love that. Well, Kat, you've got some youngsters sitting around you and we were talking about how they were excited to see you and Rachel Garcia. So I'm just curious, when you were their age, who was someone that you was, you held up on a pedestal that you wanted to be just like? Uh, yeah, my favorite player that I always watched and looked up to was Lacey Waldrop at Florida State. Uh, she won the player of the year back in 2014 and I mean I just thought that she was the absolute coolest in the world and she would come give me pitching lessons in the off season and um, just super big fan of her thankful for her and she, a big reason why I ended up going to Florida State. I was State. gonna say yeah that's a little like I mean obviously ooh, nice hit. Oh. Lily Piper almost takes the glove off of Delaney Wiz that'll be a one out single for Piper. Hey, since we have you here, Kat, I know uh, Little League has been super important for you and your family. Uh, Little League is going to be celebrated this week. Athletes Unlimited going to go on the road to Greenville, North Carolina. Talk to me about Little League softball and how it got you from there to here. Yeah, Little League was my start. 
I loved Little League. I loved every minute of it. I was super fortunate to grow up in McLean where we had a really great Little League um, and it was just my introduction to softball in general and then I uh, ended up playing at the Little League World Series so that was my introduction to international softball which I've grown up and still get the chance to play but um, it was just an incredible experience and so important for me and for my family so it's really really cool that my parents are getting honored this year. Yeah shout um, out to your parents they're the Little League Parents of the Year? Yes. How does that happen? I know and the first softball parents to ever be given the award uh, it always goes to a baseball family so so proud of my parents yeah. they totally deserve it cat thank you so much for your time it's been a joy getting to know you a little bit thanks so much all right we have two outs now we have a pinch runner on at first maddie husky is on at first she replaces Lily Piper, yep. So two outs, runner on at first. And Victoria Hayward, the batter. Into center field. Will it hang up long enough? It will. Catch is made by Zirkel. So it's an inning win formally for Team Zirkel. Only nine pitches needed by Masson. AT&T and Verizon rope you in with phone offers, then bind you to a three-year device contract. Break free with T-Mobile. Introducing Go 5G Plus, the plan that always gives new and existing customers the same great device deals and your upgrade ready in two years versus three. There's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. With America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Now's the time to get in and get away. Get up to $1,000 bonus cash on the 2023 Tucson or Santa Fe, plus 3.29% APR. Now, during the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. The non-breaded Popeye's Black and Chicken Sandwich is back. Marinated in bold Louisiana spices. Without the breading, this juicy filet is served classic or spicy on a toasted Rio's bun. Try it for just $4.99. No breading, all flavor. Love that chicken from Popeye's. Fifth inning, Team Zirkle leads Team Garcia 11-2. Second game of our doubleheader here in Rosemont, Illinois. History is going to be made as Athletes Unlimited bringing pro softball to the Little League Softball World Series in Greenville, North Carolina. You don't want to miss this inspirational event with current stars of the game competing alongside the game's future stars. Tune in August 9th, a couple days' time, 4.30 and 7, on ESPN2 to watch the AU Pro games or get your tickets today to attend in person. Visit AUProSports.com for more information. These are the players here in Athletes Unlimited who got their start playing in Little League. A lot of representation there, coast to coast. Look at all the different states, Arizona, Florida, California. Texas in there. Of course, I say North Carolina, just for you. Got that one, Mia Davidson. Uh, the pitcher, Shannon Sale, played Little League, and her mom did as well. How about this? Her mother, Kathy Sale, uh, won the 1982 Big League Softball World Series Championship, playing for Tampa, Florida Little League. How about that? That's some pretty cool stuff. So and Sale comes from some good stock. I would love to, you know, hear what her mom has to think about just the growth and the visibility of the Little League. Now the championship game is going to be on ABC. You're going to have the Athletes Unlimited, our Pro League going over to Greenville and getting to interact, I think, with the youngsters. We were talking to Kat Sandercock, and she's sitting right there next to a couple of players when she asked them, who are you here to see? And they say, you? Like, how cool is that? So taking this whole show on the road and going to affect, I think, so many young girls and have these women be role models, not just, you know, you can think about being a role model, but right there in front of you where you can look at them and make eye contact and take a photo and ask a couple questions. I think that's everything for our sport. Another full circle moment. Uh, the pitcher last inning for Team Garcia, Sydney Little John Watkins. Uh, she won the Teen Texas State Little League Championship. Her coach, your friend and mine, Amanda Scarborough. Catch made out in center field by Victoria Hayward. One out. Amanda Scarborough 
what do you know? She's going to be involved in the broadcast when we're in Greenville, South Carolina this week. And just a moment ago, well, earlier today, Amanda Scarborough with the tweet. Good morning. I'm headed to the Little League Softball World Series in Greenville. Cool stuff. Means a lot to Amanda Scarborough. Well, it's so important that the visibility is what it is. So you combine the two leagues, you put it on ESPN, Amanda's on the call, and then the championship's on ABC, and that affects all levels of our sport. We're trying to elevate this game, and you have players that are continuing to stick it out and play as long as their careers will let them and their bodies will hold up. And it trickles all the way down to Little League. Of course, we know what our college game is doing and how much fans are tuning in and falling in love with our sport because it is such a good product. I always say, if you're not a softball fan, it's just because you haven't yeah. given us a chance. That is a great, great point. There are softball fans and people who haven't discovered it yet. Exactly. Once they do, and it's so funny, I talk to people all the time who are still discovering and the little nuances about softball. Why is she running through the left side of the box? And I say, well, this is a slap. It's something that's new, not new to our game, but it's something that's a separator of our game from baseball. And there's a little education there, but it is amazing how many people are still finding out about our sport. And once they find out, they're in. What a wacky two days for Caroline Jacobson. She's batting right now against Shannon Sale. Yesterday, Jacobson had three plate appearances, saw 25 pitches, didn't get a hit, was over two with a couple strikeouts and a walk. Today, she has been uber aggressive. Her first three at bats saw a grand total of five pitches. It's 25 pitches, three plate appearances yesterday, five pitches, three plate appearances today, and she's gotten more results today. She had that double and a run scored in the second. Well, not saying that she has to be aggressive to be successful, but it's definitely going to be noted, especially for the pitchers that are scouting the rookie hitters. Hey, she's successful when she looks early in the count. So as a pitcher, you're going to say, okay, well, then I'm going to throw her something out of the zone, make her chase. And then it's the back and forth. The rookie decides, oh, okay, maybe I need to figure out my patience, maybe just look one side of the plate, and that's where the growth comes in. Hit well down the left field line. Will it stay fair? It does. It's a homer. What a day, Caroline Jacobson. First pro homer. A double and a homer for the rookie from Clemson. Great afternoon for her. I know last week was really the debut for all of these rookies, but I feel like this is the coming out party for Caroline Jacobson. Talked about her double earlier and just smokes this ball down the line. Such a beautiful swing. That's a two-strike swing. That is good as it's going to get. And the baby blues led by the babies, the rookies. One rookie, Jacobson, two hits, both extra bases. Another rookie, Sydney McKinney at the dish right now. Two for three, couple of singles. Rachel Becker, two for three. A double and a single, couple runs scored. Muffley, bottom of the order. She's got three base hits, three for three, with a run scored, a run batted in, and a stolen base. This is a type of game where these athletes are going to have to sit and stare at the stat sheet because normally you walk away from a game knowing who really had a big impact. You just kind of feel it, right? It's fresh. So-and-so had a walk-off home run. Alicia Ocasio pitched six innings or whatever, but this game, they are really going to have to look at the stat sheet mm -hmm. to figure out who's going to get those MVP points. 16 hits for Team Zirkle. 12 runs scored. Trying to win it on an inning. Bottom of the fifth when we come back.
Game one, we saw Mia Davidson smoke one. She had a couple of eight hits, including her second homer of the season. It was a route for Team Romero. 10 to 3 is your final score. Bubba Nichols continues to be a standout this year. A lot to smile about for Team Romero through the first couple of days. Ro Romeo's Juliets were knighting a bunch of hitters. Alicia Ocasio had a very dominant performance. Carrie Eberly came in on relief for the last couple of innings. But this game was in control for Team Romero. Also, Shannon Rhodes had a two-run home run. So there was just a lot of good things for the Orange team in game one for today's doubleheader. Here is your leaderboard, the top 10. Sierra Romero began the day in the second spot. She is now atop of everyone. And look who's next to her, Mia Davidson. Congratulations to the second-year pro, Cortez Nichols, top five. Kelsey Stewart Hunter, sixth. Wow. We got a new pitcher to tell you about. Former Michigan Wolverine, now pitching in her eighth professional season, Haley Wagner. Haven't seen Haley Wagner yet this weekend, so I like that all of these squads are really emptying the bullpen. And Wagner, you bet, Michigan alum has been doing it and doing it well for a long time. Lefty that throws hard, has command of a lot of different pitches, side to side really well, and has really nice off speed. Michigan has always been a pipeline for athletes unlimited softball. Wagner's been a part of every season. She was one of the original collection of players in 2020. Of course, Amanda Chittister was just such a wonderful player. Retired last fall. Abby Ramirez has been around for four years. Sierra Romero. Wagner pitching to Kelsey Harshman. Remember, Team Zirkle scored one run, top of this fifth inning. Trying to win another inning. Lifted down the left field line. Lorenz runs out of room. It's an opposite field homer for Harshman. Oh, that ball just kept carrying and carrying and carrying. Harshman's first homer of 2023. Launching, what, 40 degrees, so it was lifted pretty well. I didn't think it was going to get out. It just stayed up in the air. Once it got up there, it did not come down. Kelsey Harshman, lefty on lefty. She's been swinging the, the bat really well this weekend. Sees that ball so deep. You can see her eyes trying to track that thing down, saying, please stay fair. And it does. She saw that for as long as possible. Her back foot was almost out of the back of the batter's box. And she waited until that ball traveled behind the plate. Smothered by the shortstop, McKinney! Not enough time to get Mooley Pola. Infield single for Deja. Third time today that she's been aboard. Join the Unlimited Club as a UC Gold member, and you'll receive a softball gold box. This box includes an exclusive jersey, a Cat Osterman bobblehead, and more. Limited quantities are available, so go for the gold today at AUProSports.com slash membership. Team Garcia is getting hammered. But if they can win this fifth inning, sixth inning, and seventh inning, that's a plus 30. Still have a whole bunch of inning points on the line. Even if they don't win this game, they still have a chance to salvage some points. And go into tomorrow's final day of week two with the puncher's chance of moving up on the leaderboard. And every time you get into the box, you have an opportunity to get 40 points. So you're looking at Kelsey Harshman's hit right there her solo home run a quick 40 points for her no matter the outcome of her team not getting the winning points or maybe they do come back we'll see but there's a lot of pride here with the individual stats and it was really interesting we were looking at the leaderboard and how it's ever changing with every single pitch and Rachel Garcia is still holding on to the top 10 even though her team doesn't have those win points from yesterday does not look like they're going to have a chance to hold on to that today unless we see the most epic comeback that we've ever seen in AU history. But the fact that she's still hanging in there in the top 10, impressive. Rachel Garcia walks. So Garcia's going to get herself an extra eight points with the walk second time today that Rachel has walked. Well, the home run hitter for Team Garcia, Kelsey Harshman, is standing by with Savannah. 
Thanks, Eric. KJ, going into that at bat, that was some much needed momentum. I know there's some relief looking at that tie, 1-1 one, one in the fifth. What is your team working with right now, and how do you carry that into more at bats? Yeah, we're just chipping away, trying to get good pitches, put good swings on. Uh, we felt like we've been putting some good swings on, just balls haven't been falling for us. So one fell, luckily for us, over the fence. That was awesome to keep us in the inning. <laughs> when you're in those situations, sometimes you don't have to look at that final run box. Mm -hmm. You can look at the innings. How important is that? How do you keep that in mind to fight? Yeah, I think that's what's so cool about AU is, like, you are literally in it to win just every inning. Like, regardless of the score, I mean, obviously everyone wants to win at the end, but just like how much can go on in between the games. Like you have one big inning, but you can just scrape away so many points um, leading into the end of the game. And that's literally what we're trying to do right here. So absolutely. Thank you, Kelsey. Appreciate it. All eyes on Kelsey Harshman for the rest of this season. She has played four years of AU softball. She has four home runs, one in every season. 2020, 2021, last year, and that was her first homer. Can she get to two? Like a metronome. <laughs> Consistently awesome, Kelsey Harshman. Runners on at first and at second. Taylor Edwards hitting off of Haley Wagner. On the ground, McKinney to second for one. And Garcia goes in hard. Looks like Muffley's okay. That's the first out of the inning. A little contact there at second base, but all smiles. Everyone's all right. Taylor Edwards rolling over this ground ball. Sydney McKinney, this is definitely the right choice. Only play that she had deep in the hole. Getting a sure out and a much needed out in this inning. Jesse Warren again got jammed. That's been the theme of her weekend. Two down. We th you think about her last at bat, the bases were loaded, and she got an outside pitch and absolutely hammered it to right field. It was just right to Jacobson in the outfield. And so the success so far this weekend has been to go inside on Jesse Warren. Last chance to win an inning for Team Garcia, Jasmine Jackson. If Wooly Polo scores from third, it'll be an inning win. Strike. Wagner one pitch away from getting back to that dugout. Oh, gets Jackson, and that'll load the bases. Last thing she wanted to do with two strikes on Jackson. There really isn't not anything more frustrating than that as a pitcher. You work so hard, you're facing these elite hitters, you get ahead and then it just gets away. You've got to regroup, you've got to flush it on to the next one, but man, for about 10 seconds, it's painful. <laughs> of course, it's painful for Jackson. She also got hit, but as a pitcher, just internally, you're like ah, beating yourself up a little bit, but got to move on, short-term memory. Here's Lily Piper. Seventh batter of the inning. It's the first time today we've seen the sun. You are correct. Wow. Sun. Let's stay right here. I don't want to jinx it, though. 78 degrees. I don't know how quibble it's at. We have had consistent rain throughout the course of our day. So both teams have dealt with the same situation. It was a big factor in our first game. Team for Rainbow made four errors. Weather played a part. Popped up. Should end the inning. Muffley. Side is retired. But the home run by Kelsey Harshman means the fifth inning is a wash. One run for both sides. Next inning will play be worth 20. Vintage Y2K. Yes.
Oh, retro Samsung. Very impressive. You think so? At at and it's worth a new Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5. Any year, any condition. <laughs> Even that condition. When you buy 10 tickets on Vivid Seats, you get the 11th ticket free. I wonder what my 11th will be. Hey! You're trash! Living rent free in a hockey player's head? <laughs> or maybe just make some noise! What's your 11th? YouTube is now the exclusive home of NFL Sunday Ticket. Does this mean you can watch NFL Sunday Ticket without putting a satellite dish on your roof? Does this mean you can watch your favorite teams out of market Sunday games? Does this mean all the players are technically YouTube celebrities now? Yes, to every one of those things. Sign up now and get $50 off NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV. Can I have some lace? Mm. What you watching? The FIFA Women's World Cup. Can I show you? Imagine this is Mia Hamm. Whoa. What the? Mia takes the ball downfield and passes it to the Doritos Abby Wambach. She shoots! She scores! Most offense we've seen so far this year with Athletes Unlimited and spin on a rainy Saturday in Rosemont. And Morgan Zirkle's squad, the Baby Blues, so many rookies. They've got some good veteran presence in the middle of the lineup, but it's been the breakout party. Caroline Jacobson, Rachel Becker, Sydney McKinney, she's been doing it. And then, of course, Gwen Svekis. There's the veteran in the middle of it all with the two-run shot in the third inning. But there's been a little something for everything, for everyone in this game for Team Zirkle. 12 to 3 is our score. 20 points on the line. The fifth inning was tied. So whoever wins this inning, everyone on their team will get 20 points. For every run scored during this year's Athletes Unlimited softball season, aspiration committed and planting 10 trees. Heading into this week, 380 trees have been committed this season thanks to aspiration support. 28 trees today. Wow. First game was a 10-3 win for Team Romero. Right now, 12-3. Team Zirkle on top of Team Garcia. Well, you look at the weekends for AU and you look at it kind of like a series that you would see in college and you're going to have your aces pitch game one. Absolutely. So day one yesterday and then probably rest themselves after a, a long outing, which is what we saw yesterday from the likes of Taylor McQuillan and Megan Framo, Rachel Garcia, Alyssa Denham. And then so this day two is what you call the bullpen day, right? In the MLB is bull, bullpen day. And then tomorrow is... I'm guessing we're going to see the aces back at it. So you might see day two for the doubleheader to be the offensive day. And then tomorrow, the score is probably a little bit closer just because those elite arms are going to go at it. That makes sense. And those elite arms can make their own decisions, too, because Rachel Garcia and Megan Faramo, both captains, and they can do whatever they want. If they want to pitch seven innings. It's their prerogative. They earned it by being a captain. Zekas gets the walk, third time today that she's been aboard. Walks are worth eight points, so the leadoff runner aboard. Make your plans now to join us right here in Rosemont during Champions Weekend, August 25th to the 27th. We play our final three days of games and crown a champion. Discounted tickets and hotels are available at AUProSports.com slash tickets. Sixth inning, Rachel Becker, two for three, double, and a single. Becker played at Purdue four years in the Big Ten and wanted to try things out in the Big 12. Spent last year in Stillwater, Oklahoma, playing at Oklahoma State. Sale gets the strikeout. 
Second strike out for Sale. Here's Josie Muffley. What a day. Hitting in the number nine spot. Three hits, all singles. She scored a run, stole the base, and driven in a run. She's got 70 stat points today. I think a 70 stat and inning points. But hey, if you're on a winning team and you're producing, that is the recipe for success. You've got to contribute to the win. I told you the factoid about her. She is from Portage, Michigan, which is called Celery City. <laughs> uh, the mascot for the Celery City is Mr. Crispy. It's a sock of, sock of celery. Not Mr. Crunchy? No, Mr. Crispy. I would think crunchy for cel celery, not crispy. No? I, I bet she has had <laughs> a little cream cheese on the side of a uh, celery. Maybe some uh, raisins on top of it, like a bugs on a log. Would that ever make it down to Tucson, Arizona? I would not eat that, no. What? Mm, no oh, thanks. my goodness. <laughs> it's Nirvana. No, thanks. <laughs> well, you're not allowed in Portage, Michigan. Well, that's sad. I guess some people probably put some other type of pasty thing, a peanut butter, I guess, maybe. Yes, now we're talking. You can have as much celery as anyone would want. It's supposed to be, what, negative calories? Isn't that always the legend? You burn more calories by chewing it than it actually is in it? That's what I'm saying, so you're crunching it. So Mr. Crunchy. Mr. Crispy. No, disagree. I'm going to take it up with him. <laughs> we need to have a chair chat or something like that with Josie Muffley. <laughs> Swatted into the air. Hayward on the move. Two down. So First time today the has been retired. Say, she can get out, apparently. Somehow. It's been that kind of day for Josie. Here's Morgan Zirkel. Chance for the captain to get greedy. He got 20 points for innings here on the line. He got a run out of first base. Well placed hit. Could score Svekas from first. And that's dead ball. Svekas will have to go back to first. Circle so far today, drove in a run with the sacrifice fly in the second inning. Sack flies are a plus 10. Singled and walked in that fourth inning in which six runs were scored for Team Zirkle. Swing and a miss. Good job by Sale. She walks Speckus to begin the inning, but then gets Becker, Muffley, and Zirkel. Bottom of the sixth when we come back to Rosemont. I didn't have the representation when I was young. I looked up to baseball players like Jeter. I want to be just like Jeter. I think it's so wonderful that there's women in sport now and they can aspire to be just like us. What a play, Sis Bates! You give little girls a hope and a dream that, hey, maybe that can be me.
I've been sitting here thinking about this little camera, and it's on me right now, I think. I'm like having a big brother moment. Like, I can see this camera over here, it's falling me, and I don't like that. <laughs> you're still on the mic. Yeah. You want to hear what you're saying? You got any I'm not saying much. Words of That's the thing. For the fans? I wish I did. It's right there. It's been hey, fun. Wave. Hi, Mom. Love you, Mom. Love I you, Mom it. and Dad. I miss you so much. And my, and my brothers. Aww. <laughs> Oh so I know at least one's watching. Maybe the other is too. She's done a great job with the microphone and a great job with the bat in her hands. Caroline Jacobs hit two for four with a double and a homer. It is so true. I'm sure they feel like they are their own reality TV stars. When you have the microphone on, you know the camera's following you. Kaylee Clifton comes into the game. Softly to short. And McKinney flawless. One down. Nice play by Sydney McKinney. If Team Garcia can score a run here in the sixth inning, it'll be a plus 20 for everyone on their roster. Fifth inning was tied, so this would win the fifth and the sixth inning with one run scored. Victoria Hayward. Barehanded, Wiz throws it down the line. I think Vic would have been safe no matter what. Oh, yeah. That'll be a single for Hayward, first hit of the day. And no one knows the rules better than Victoria Hayward. I'm here to tell you, she's going to be stealing. And I guarantee you she was talking about the situation in the dugout because, like you talked about, you have the rollover ending point. She's going to be due up. She's like, I'm going to get myself on. Situationally, we've got to score me. Successful steal is plus 10. They need a run. She lets Harshman take a pitch. It's high ball one. Harshman has not been retired so far today. A single, hit with a pitch, and a homer. There goes Hayward. Off-speed pitch. Oh, she picked the perfect pitch to run on. No chance for Svekis to throw her out. Plus 10 for Hayward. We talked to her earlier about who is the fastest player in this league. She says maybe Morgan Zirkle's got her by a step, but I don't know. She's looking pretty speedy there. She's the all-time leader in stolen bases in Athletes Unlimited. That is now career steal number 20. So 200 of her lifetime points come just with her feet and her head. If I was as fast as Victoria Hayward, Cindy McKinney, Morgan Zirkle, I would just not stop running. I would just keep going. <laughs> we rarely see steals a third. If a right-handed hitter was up, there's the op opportunity because you can do some things and maybe do a drag bunt, look, you know, start fake bunt, take steal type of thing, draw in the third baseman, read the shortstop always. You got to see where they're positioned, but lefty hitter makes it almost impossible swatted and it gets down Lorenz gets it on one hop and station to station softball Hayward has to stop at third Harshman making someone throw the ball over to first where no one was backing her up so Harshman continues with her wonderful day if there's some outside the box thinkers when this game is all said and done she's got a chance to possibly be the third MVP She's three for three. She's reached base safely all four times with a homer. Garcia's team needs to score some more runs before I'm thinking maybe. You're not going to go with me on that one, huh? I, I need to see some runs from Team Garcia. And very quickly, you're going to see after that hit, Captain Zirkle call a timeout. Looks like we're going to have a pitching change because of what's on the line here. They are in control of this game, but again, 20 points are on the line. So Alyssa Denham. Yesterday's starting pitcher will come on for Team Zirkle. We're going to keep it here. Denham yesterday started the ball game and 
through the first four innings, didn't give up an earned run. Scattered four hits, walked one, struck out one. Should be relatively fresh. She threw 61 pitches yesterday. And she's a drop ball specialist. We'll see her throw some curves, off-speed pitches as well, but her bread and butter is that down ball. And so now with speed on the corners, you have Victoria Hayward at third, but only one out. You're looking maybe a double play ball here with Deja Mulipola. It's going to be some Arizona Wildcat on Arizona Wildcat crime here. Former battery. Alyssa Denham has been a captain before, and whenever she's a captain, the temptation is for her team to wear jeans. At least some form of denim, right? I will bring up, we had this situation, even though it was the last inning where Victoria Hayward was at third base, a pitching change. You have an elite hitter, and it was Sierra Romero. Now it's Deja Mulipola, but they had a walk-off squeeze button. This is a very similar type of situation where Team Garcia's got to get Victoria Hayward across. Do they do a squeeze bunt with Deja Mulipola? I could see Harshman, who is one of the craftier players. It's gonna be, she's going to steal. There's no way she's going to stay on it first and yes. run the risk of Mulipola hitting into a double play. No, she's got to be put in motion, try and get two in scoring position. Here we go. Yep. All right, there goes Harshman. There's the bunt, and it's foul. Everyone will go back to their base. I can tell you Victoria Hayward wanted that. It worked last week, <laughs> so why not try it again? If that ball was fair, she's going to be safe. How many times in Deja Mulipola's life, and you've seen a lot of her games when she's a college player at Arizona, how many times has she been asked to just lay down a bunt? I think that's the first time I've ever seen her bunt. I'm going to be honest with you. But that shows what's on the line right now. You look at the score and you go, what, three-hole hitter bunting? Nope. There goes Harshman. Oh, they throw through, and the ball gets away, and it allow Hayward to score. It's a plus 20 for everyone on Team Garcia. Wow. They didn't even need the bunt. What a big play by Harshman. Eight, ten points for the steal, and 20 for winning two innings. Gwen Svekis just cannot believe it. She's beside herself. There's no communication. Remember, these are two rookies up the middle, Sydney McKinney and... Josie Muffley playing second base. Nobody had second base on the cover. The throw goes into center field, and Hayward easily with the run. Only level of softball where there is such drama in a 12-3 game. <laughs> you need to win innings, and that's what I... that run did for Team Garcia. They now have four runs. They're eight runs behind, but that was a huge point in this game for everyone to get 20 points. I'm really shocked that Svekas threw it all the way down. In that situation, I'm maybe just going to do a little fake pump and throw to third base, or maybe not even throw it all, to be honest with you, with how fast Victoria Hayward is. I don't want to mess around with that at all. And it, that throw was all the way to second, and nobody was covering. That's unfortunate for Team Zirkle. I'll tell you what, when we look at the end of the game numbers, Kelsey Harshman is going to well, she began today 52nd on the leaderboard. But she has got two singles, a homer, was hit with a pitch, she stole a base, and now her team has won both the first inning, the fifth inning, and the sixth inning. Big time day for KJ. She just needs to be on a winning team. And then her numbers will be boosted up. Harshman's now moved up to 48th. Sorry, 45th. Yeah! So her team's down eight runs, and she personally has moved up seven spots on the leaderboard. It's a team game, but it's an individual game. Yeah! Great pitch by Denham. Bulls, her former college teammate, two down. She knows the power that Deja has in her bat, and so she goes back-to-back off-speed curveballs. This one, it's not the location that she wanted, but sometimes that does not matter. You just need it to be low and deceptive. And you can see that Deja was fooled out in front. It's a big strikeout for Denham in relief. This all of a sudden is an important at bat for Garcia. Garcia, the champion of the AUX season back in June. Relatively quiet day. She's got the two walks. 
which is plus eight, plus eight, 16. But she's got bigger dreams than that. Normally games, well, we saw one just last week. She had 290 points in one game. She's got the 16 for both walks, and now the three innings they've won. That's 46 points for Garcia so far today. And that hit her. Give her another eight. 54 points for Garcia. Melissa Denham's wondering if Rachel Garcia's left elbow was a little bit over the river. If the ball is in the river and the hitter's elbow is in that area, that should be a dead ball ball. If it's in the batter's box, that's fine. You can move anywhere you want or not move at all. You don't have to get out of the way, but it's going to be that left arm, the one that has the elbow guard. Where is it? You can see her leaning forward for sure. But where is it right here? Is it over the river? And I don't think so. I think that should stand. All right, my phone's blown up. I got the good people out there in Chilliwack, British Columbia, saying, what exactly is the river? We talk about that all the time. Okay. Explain the river to people. It's the space between the edge of home plate and you're going to see the chalk or the white turf of the batter's box. And it's just that little strip of dirt that you're going to see right there. And that right is where us, yep. yeah, that's where us pitchers, we want to live. Because if you throw it over home plate, especially in this league, these hitters are too, too elite. So you want to try and just work on the edges. And it's where your ball clips home plate. And so you're going to have movement. Melissa Denham has so much spin on her ball. She wants to work towards the edge where the ball clips the corner of home plate. And by the time it ends up right there, it's going to end up in the river. That was a little bit middle, but it's where you want to work the corners. You work on it so hard in your bullpens, hitting your spots, hitting your spots, trusting your spin, starting it in a certain place, and then where it ends up. It takes a good umpire to understand that the ball crosses home plate versus where it's caught are two different things. You've got about two feet of space where that ball's still going to move. Two balls and a strike to Taylor Edwards. Oh! That's a strike. Kind of really wanted. Look at Speckus. That's a strike. Still framing it. I mean, that, that ball is on home plate. That's not even in the river, in my opinion. I'm looking at it on my Yaku Tech as well, so it validates a strike. But there it is, the river. So you see the ball that's on the edge of home plate? That's the river. And if you can utilize your spin, manipulate the ball, have it cut home plate by the time it ends up in the river, that is, in the book, a strike. It's hard to see with the naked eye, though. So the walk to Edwards, that's the first time that she has been aboard this weekend, had been 0 for 6, but she at least is going to get 8 points for the walk. And the bases are loaded. Here's Jesse Warren. And if anyone is due, it is Jesse. She is beyond frustrated. She flied out with the bases loaded in the third, and she popped out with runners on at first and at third, and just one out in the fifth. Great hitters, great competitors. It's hard to get them three times in a row in high leverage positions. And this would be one. The base is loaded. Did Jesse just touch that ball? After she foul tipped it, yeah. That is a no-no. <laughs> there are so many batters who would never touch the ball. Oh, my God, that she broke some rule. You are not allowed to touch the ball. That is just bad softball mojo, Jesse. Well, we'll see. Maybe it's good softball mojo. Wiz tags Rachel on the way by. One Bruin tags out the other Bruin. That'll do it, but it is an inning win. Two innings, one for Team Garcia. I've seen some passionate college football fans. Sling Blue 40, Sling Blue 40! But with Sling TV, some are taking their love to the next level. Right on the numbers. I can still suit up, right, Des? No. Let's not. With Sling, you can stream college football on ESPN for the best price. The college football you love, the live TV you love. Hey, can you pass the dip? Subway refreshed their ingredients, their menu, and now they're slicing their meats fresh.
That's why their new Subway Series subs are preferred by this champ. And this future champ. Pros who are talking heads prefer fresh sliced turkey. And pros who use their heads prefer fresh sliced ham. More deli meats are preferred by this QB. And preferred by his old backup QB. And if we prefer it, we know you'll prefer it too. Is this slice as good as your tennis slice? I can't answer that, but yes. I like to move it, move it. You like to move it. We're reinventing our network. Move it. I like to move it, move it. Reliable, perfectly orchestrated. The United States Postal Service. Athletes Unlimited Softball on ESPN is sponsored by Tops and by Aspiration, a global leader in financing climate impact. Welcome back, everyone. We've made it to the seventh inning. Ton of offense today. By far the most offense we've seen in any of our first five days. Of This is the fourth season of Athletes Unlimited Softball. Combined 16 runs in our second game of the doubleheader after seeing a combined 13 runs in the first game. Shannon Sale. She's earned her keep. Came on in relief in the fourth inning. Got it out there. Got three outs in the fifth inning, did give up the home run to Jacobson, but then got three more outs without an earned run against her in the sixth. So she's recorded seven outs. That's plus four for every yet. That's a plus 28. Didn't give up the earned run, so take away the 10. She's a plus 18 in stat points. Well, came in at a pivotal point where she gave Team Garcia, in my opinion, a little bit momentum. You have two strikeouts in the sixth inning, and then you go into the offense, and Team Garcia able to get that run across, which I'm looking at the scoreboard, 12 to 4, so the game very much in hand for Team Zirkle, but you look at the inning points and it's split. Are you trying to tell me she put some wind in their sail? There you go. 2-0 to Amanda Lorenz. High, playable, Hayward makes the play. That's now eight out recorded for sale. We're going to do it again tomorrow. Another doubleheader. First game is going to be on ESPN2. Team Faremo taking on Team Zirkle. That'll be uh, game one. Game two will be Team Romero taking on Team Garcia. Sierra Romero's team is 2-0 and oh and looking like a juggernaut. Quality strike for sale. We didn't get to see Megan Framo, Captain Megan Framo, today. It was all about her bullpen, her rookie bullpen. So it'll be a good matchup. You'll have a well-rested rookie and Megan Framo ready to go against Team Zirkle, who looks like they're going to take care of business here today and get their first win of the weekend. And then have a team in Team Romero who is scorching hot, matching the jersey color of their team, orange, but I'm guessing we're probably going to see Rachel Garcia get the start for her squad, a team that's going to be looking to rebound and leave this weekend feeling good going into week three. There's a lot on the line tomorrow. No doubt. It's going to be a quick turnaround, too. They're going to play tomorrow's games and then name captains and then have a draft. And then, remember, it's off to Greenville, North Carolina. That's right. Play some championship season games away from... Parkway Bank Sports Complex here in Rosemont for the first time. That'll be so fun for this group. It's like field trip week, right? Let's take our talents and take our show on the road. Of course, they do love playing here in Rosemont. This is their home. They're so comfortable here, treated so well. But I think it'll be fun, a little field trip time. Gibson works the one-out walk. Well, yesterday, just a incredible performance by one of the younger players in this year's field. Megan Paramo, complete game. Just like a horse. Just in control. And you always wonder how a first time captain is going to react. And she's also a rookie. That's so much all in one weekend. And she was out there unfazed, in control. It was an elite nightcap pitcher's duel between her and her former teammate, Rachel Garcia. 135 pitches. You think she could turn around and start herself tomorrow? 
Oh, yeah. I fly ball, right side foul territory. Piper runs out of room. Oh, yeah, that's what she did at UCLA. You pitch Friday, you pitch Sunday, and you do it. Go get it. 15 years ago, you'd pitch Friday, you pitch Saturday, you pitch Sunday. <laughs> that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> and then you brush your uh, teeth with your opposite hand for the next three days. Yeah. Here's your leaderboard, Sierra Romero leads her teammate, Mia Davidson, on the leaderboard. Garcia currently in that eighth spot. Garcia began the day first. That Team Orange, they are going to get broken up next week. I can tell you that. There's going to be a lot of players in demand. Fly ball deep left center field. That'll get down and bounce against the wall. Coming around third, the throw. Not in time. Gibson is safe. Wins with an RBI double. So the offense continues for Team Zirkle. They now have 13 runs scored. Well, Delaney Wiz heard us talking about Megan Fremo and Rachel Garcia and said, hey, I played there too. Let's talk about me a little bit. Love to watch her hit such a good swing, does such a nice job going up to this pitch. Hits the rise ball very well. All right, MVP points could be on the line right here for Caroline Jacobson. She's got two hits. Both of them have been extra base hits, a double in the second and her first pro homer in the fifth. Yes. Team Zirkle, they won the second inning, the third inning, the fourth inning. They didn't win the sixth or the seventh or the first. But now a one nothing lead here in the seventh. And Jacobson strikes out on three pitches. Just knew it. It's almost like the ball had hit the catcher's mitt and she was already running to the first base dugout. Yeah, but sometimes you just get fooled, tip your hat. It's a third strikeout for Shannon Sale. Fourth, actually. Came in relief in the fourth inning and finished that inning with a strikeout and then picked up two in the last inning. And here's one strikeout for her in the seventh. Picano's going to bat. Gianna Picano's going to hit. First time we have seen her this weekend. So an opportunity. Runner on at second. Two outs. Top of the seventh inning. I've seen a lot of softball in my life. I've never seen this. Gwen Speck is, is the on-deck batter, and she's actually not close to her dugout on the first base side. She's on the third base side. I guess she doesn't want to get drilled if there's a foul ball off the bat of Picanio. Have I just not been paying attention? Well, Does that happen more it's often? Not a, it's not a collegiate rule. You'll see it in internationals where... Okay. The hitters that are on deck, you like to be on the side that you're hitting on, right? So if you're a lefty, you'd be on this side. I'm pointing to my right side, their left side. Svek is a right-handed hitter. She wants to be on the right-handed batter's box side. So she's getting her, her timing in for the right side. Well, much to do about nothing. The strike up Picanio, but a run does score. Team Zirkle, they're now up by nine, trying to win the seventh and final inning. Back in a moment. Drip, not like that, like this. The greats aren't afraid to fail. They're fueled by it. Trophies require greatness, but greatness doesn't require trophies. Because greatness isn't about what you've done, 
It's about what you do next. Well, a long day here in Rosemont, Illinois, coming to a close. This is going to be the final half inning, the bottom of the seventh. It is a 13-4 lead for Team Zirkle, but we still have uh, something to play for. Seventh inning, 10 points on the line, and don't give up on Team Garcia. They've got experience. They've got good veteran hitters. Can they catch lightning in a bottle? We shall see. They need a whole bunch, but it could happen. Jasmine Jackson, Lily Piper, Sis Bates expected to hit against Alyssa Denham. Denham coming on and hitting a go in relief of Haley Wagner. Starting pitcher Mariah Massone. Massone is in line to get the win. She pitched the first four innings, gave up two runs, both of them earned. Really, after the first three batters of the game, she was lights out. Team Garcia didn't threaten in the second, third, or fourth. First pitch, strike one to Jackson. A really nice outing for Mariah Mazzone. I'm just kind of already peeking and thinking about tomorrow, about who Team Zirkle is going to throw in this in the first game. Thinking maybe start Denim, bring in Corrick, maybe vice versa, combo of those two. I thought Denim looked really sharp yesterday, but then you have Masone in her outing today, so kind of enter her in the mix. So Captain Zirkle's got some choices for tomorrow. I think for Team Garcia, it's no secret who we will see there. Did not see Rachel pitch today. And then you get Faremo. Faremo, yeah. Call her own number for oh, Team yeah. Faremo. And then. My guess is McQuillan, start, and if there's any trouble or you just need a little bit of a change, you finish with Alexander for Team Romero, the undefeated squad. Well, they got an abundance of riches. Alicia Ocasio was really good today. Clubbed high in the air. Jacobson camps underneath it. One down. Yeah, looking at the roster right now, I guess, jeez. You talk about Romero and the offense that they've had and how well they play as a team. On their roster, they got Odyssey Alexander, Taylor McQuillan, Alicia Ocasio, and Carrie Everly. Right. Good golly. And the separation to me for AU is the day two, I would say, I'm, quotation, bullpen pitchers, number two pitchers, whoever you want to draft in the order, who's hot, who's got the hot hand at the right time. Who's stepping up in the circle on day two? I think that's the separator in AU. And today was Alicia Ocasio. Came out and just set the table for Team Romero. And got MVP one because of it. Yep. 60 points for Ocasio. Piper, third baseman whiz. Great scoop by Gibson. Two down. One more out to get for Denim. And we are going to have, is Kaylee Clifton still in the game? Yep, Kaylee Clifton's going to hit. Try to keep the game alive. Team Zirkle scored one run in the top of the seven. So for Team Garcia to win this inning, they need to actually get two runs. If they tie, the win, inning win goes to Team Zirkle. So some work to do with two outs and the bases clear for Team Garcia. Clifton batted an inning ago and bounced to short. Denham came out of the pen an inning ago. She got two outs. She's got two outs here in the seventh. Nice little day out of the bullpen for her if she can get another out without a run scored. Yeah. Chopper could end the game. Wiz Gibson, ball game. Denham gets a 1-2-3 inning, 
and it's a win for Team Zirkle, their first win of the weekend. They win the seventh inning as well. It's going to be a big points bonanza for everyone on Team Zirkle. The individual points to me is going to be standing out because there were a lot of at-bats in this game for Team Zirkle. They swung the bats well. So that's going to do it. Two games in the books here in Rosemont, Illinois. Win for Team Romero in our first one, a win for Team Zirkle in the second. For Kenzie Fowler, for Savannah Collins, I'm Eric Collins. We'll see you tomorrow. I was talking to the doorman in my building. He says, when's the next equalizer coming? <laughs> I say, why do you guys like that movie so much? He says, because you get the people that we want to get. Who are you getting this time? Whoever it is, I'm going to get them for you. Whatever you and your friends do, do it somewhere else. He's a common man. He doesn't fly around with capes or anything. I'd like a cape, though. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Look at these steaks, they're great. Yeah, kind of thought I, I had the aisle, but... Hot Nuts Popcorn Bundle and Save. Hot Nuts and Popcorn and Savings. Just like bundling your home and car with Geico. Yeah, in fact, Hot Nuts are like home insurance. I get it. The Gecko explained it pretty clearly. Whoa! Hey, I know you. Yeah, hi. Not you. The guy who helped me bundle my home and car, he's great. Thanks, mate. I appreciate it. Probably thought you were somebody else. <laughs> okay. See how much you could save by bundling with Geico. Are you a new AT&T customer looking to upgrade your phone? You're trapped. Locked into your contract for three years. Introducing the Easy Unlock. Bring your AT&T locked phone and T-Mobile will pay it off and give you one of the latest 5G smartphones free. Free your phone now at T-Mobile. An experienced QPC eater knows you should never let the ketchup that falls from the hot and juicy burger go to waste. more ground in the Kia Sportage Turbo Hybrid. Kia, movement that inspires.